thanks everybody for joining this webinar. Hopefully, I'll give you some knowledge of us and um, you'll walk away with some good knowledge of us and our products. So first, I'd just like to start with Virgin Australia. We have a joint venture partnership with Delta. So part of today is not just learning about us, but learning how we interact with Delta, who is our JV partner out of the US, which is part of the reason you see this slide. So for, from our network here in the US, so we fly out of Los Angeles to Australia. We fly to the three gateways, Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. Delta does fly out of LA to Sydney. So we do share that, that flight out of Los Angeles. So, we, so with that, that's 25 direct flights per week out of Los Angeles to experience 45 destinations across Australia and New Zealand. So Within Australia and New Zealand, those are going to all be uh, Virgin Australia operated flights. Uh, within the US, any flight outside of Los Angeles will be a Delta operated flight. And then we also have flights um, just as an add on benefit. We also have flights once you're in Australia. We fly to New Zealand, we also fly to Fiji, we fly to Indonesia, and we fly to Hong Kong the Cook Islands, and we even fly to Papua New Guinea. As you can see from this map here, this gives a little more insight into, to show all of what we do when we uh, have our joint venture with Delta, so all over the US, into Australia, and all of the other cities within Australia, New Zealand, and other countries that we operate. So another important part of an airline is obviously the uh, mileage information, mileage program. Our program called Velocity is actually for Australians and New Zealanders, so it's not a, a program that currently is available in the US, but because Delta is our joint venture partner, any uh, people that book in the United States can access the Sky Miles, so part of that benefit is they can earn and redeem Sky mile benefits on both Virgin and Delta. And depending on their level of, of uh, mileage, so if they're, I believe, a medallion diamond, and maybe it is a gold that they do get some of the reciprocal uh, allowance, which is priority check in, um, lounge entrance, and, and extra baggage. The other thing that we, we started as well is. Wi-Fi, so we do now have Wi-Fi on our flights through to Australia, as does Delta. So um, it is at a very nominal cost. Um, I think the last time we were on it, I think it was about uh, $24 for the entire flight. Now, of course, that can change because how all of our cars costs are done for Virgin Australia, it's based in AUD, and then it gets given gets converted to USD when the final uh, cost is uh, converted. And then we have that within Australia, what we have is we, it's very similar to how Delta operates in the US. So there is a level of free Wi-Fi, but then there's a an, an, an second level. So if you wanna do your uh, emails and things like that, there will be a nominal fee to access that throughout the flight. And then, um, like Delta, we also have won awards as well, most specifically for us. We have won awards for Best Airline and Best Staff for the Asia Pacific region, whereas Delta is winning Best uh, Number One Airline for seven, seven consecutive years by Business Traveler. And then our business class product called The Business has been awarded Best Business Class two years running from 2017 to 2018. And then Delta is the world's most on-time global airlines uh, from 2017. Just to highlight some of the awards that both of us have, which makes our partnership, I think, a win-win across the board. So I'd like to show this slide um, to show basically between, and I'll have another slide after this to show Basically, when Delta upgraded their 777 uh, April of this year, they added 
their Delta One suite to their business class, and they added an actual premium product to sort of the middle, sort of like our premium economy. They call it premium select. And then they have their Delta Comfort and their economy. So now between the two of us to Australia, we basically both have a four product offering. So I'll just go through this a little bit just as the map on the aircraft just to show you how it looks from an overview. So this is our business class in the purple. Our business class is a one-to-one. -one. It is reverse herringbone. So reverse herringbone gives that added privacy and to where the seats go inwards instead of outwards so you don't have any of that awkwardness which what I've heard, uh, if, if it's in the reverse, you can get um, sort of knocked with the trays or when flight attendants or people walk by. So having the reverse allows it to be a lot more uh, of a comfortable experience. We do have a bar on board as well on our business class. So that bar does situate right here. So it's not quite in the middle, but you'll have um, the first part of business class here. Then our bar is right here, and there's even a little two-person sitting area right here adjacent to the bar. So there will be a flight attendant there at the bar so that alcohol is not just readily available. That is also for the safety, just to make sure no kids or anybody else uh, has access to it. So our flight attendants will monitor if somebody does seem like they've had um, a little too much, or if there's uh, somebody that maybe doesn't seem like they're 21 yet, just to make sure that it's not something that, you know, that we could be liable, or just to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, one thing we also do provide on board as well in our business class, we do do the pajamas. So everybody has provided pajamas and amenity kits, and the flight attendants will do the full bed service so they'll make the bed fully flat they'll put the mattress pad duvets sheets and all of that so it will be like you're having a sleep at home our seats can sleep up to somebody who is six foot eight so that's i think pretty much the the longest on the flight to this region so that's pretty nice um, just to let you know, our meals are designed by Australian chef. He is called Luke Massman. He actually has um, a restaurant here in Los Angeles. That's where I'm located. He does have a restaurant here. So um, you can read up on him. We do do switch outs of the meals from time to time. We have meals created specifically for each cabin. So we have a special meal for the business. We have a special meal for premium economy and for the economy section as well. So now I'll go on to our premium economy cabin. Premium economy is a 242. So all of the seats, except for the first row, all of the seats have basically a footrest that is in the row in front of them. So the seat in front of them will have a footrest that will come down. That very first row will have a manual seat rest that the flight attendants will bring out. The seats are actually pretty pretty groomy. Um, we actually had our sales conference and actually I went down in premium economy in actually a middle seat. I was actually in the very last row, row 17, 17E. And um, as much as the first, I was sort of like, I'm gonna be in the middle seat going to Australia. But it was actually a fairly wide seat. It was a footrest coming down. It was, it was very spacey and then just to let you know, in those seats here, the D or the E and F seats, there is a there is an armrest there that will come up. So the ones on the end, it does not come up, but the E and F, it will come up. So just a little FYI, there is in premium economy an area we call the premium pantry. So just right here, it basically is an area where they have cold snacks, sandwiches, and drinks throughout the flight. So once the, the first meal services provided, there that will be accessible throughout the flight. And then we do have our economy section. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. The premium, the premium economy is right here in black. So this is where the premium pantry is right here, the 242. We have 24 seats there. Business is 34 seats. This is the economy section, which is a 333. And this is our economy 
section. So what economy X is, the seats themselves are the same as economy, but we added an additional feature. So right now, it is an add-on to any existing economy booking. We are hoping that next year in the early part of 2020, we will have it as a bookable class as Delta does their Comfort Plus. But as right now, it's an auxiliary item that can be done either through yourself to the GDS, or they, the guests can contact our guest service center, or you can contact our, our agent help desk, or on the day of the flight, if it is still available, they can do that at the airport as well. Uh, right now, the cost is 225 Australian. So obviously that will be converted to whatever the USD rate is at that day. So what is provided to the Economy X? They basically get to check in and pre-board with premium economy. They get the extra legroom. So this first section here, this whole section is premium, uh, sorry, Economy X. This first row here and this row here, they are Economy X. So they all have the extra legroom. They also get first choice of meal selection and noise canceling headset. So everybody else in economy will get the regular headsets, but economy X will get the noise canceling headsets like they do in the premium economy cabin. Now, another thing to point out that in economy, where it's a 333, there are certain areas throughout the cabin where we have little kiosks set up, where we have little snacks and um, water pitchers set up throughout the flight. So once the main meal service is done, if they have snacks throughout, uh, if they want to partake of a snack throughout the flight, they can do it. So I know there's one um, right here, and then there's also an area in the back, and this is where the crew is in the very rear, which when I uh, went on a flight in April and I was in economy, so I wanted to make sure I experienced a full product offering. I was actually in the very last row in Economy X. So I did go all the way back here into the economy section where the crew is, and they actually uh, can provide coffee, tea, that we even have hot chocolate on board, and little snack bars like um, granola bars and things like that they, that people can ask outside of the regular meal service. And so next I'm gonna go just to show you how Delta also has a very similar product to offering. So this is their Delta One Suite, which is in the very first part of the cabin. This is their premium select, which is similar to ours. So there's just a one to one in their premium or Delta One Suite. The Delta Premium Select, like ours, is a 242 with a footrest as well. Their Delta Comfort is a, a bigger cabin and um, can be booked as an actual class, which I believe is W class, and then their Economy class. So similar to ours, it is a 333 configuration in Economy. So here's just a side-by-side -side comparison just to show you how our different products sort of compare. So as I advised earlier on our business class, it's a fully flat live bed suite. Our meals are provided by Luke Magnum. Um, our beverages, um, we definitely always provide some Australian wines and spirits throughout the flight. Um, we do have the, uh, the USB access on the aircraft. And just one thing to point out here, this is a shot of the bed when it's laid flat. So these are all little cubby holes and spaces. And even this little spot right here is a little area that opens up that you can put your tablet or iPad. And so this whole area is uh, plenty of room for uh, a workstation. So this is Delta's Delta One Suite which is now on their flight through to Sydney. So as you can see, there's plenty of room there. They actually do have a door that will enclose, as you see here, which will give them full privacy throughout their flight. Um, Delta does use um, a local um, chef here in Los Angeles to provide their meals. And they do use two new products for their amenity kits with featuring um, kale products. Now this is Delta's uh, premium economy, which is called premium select. 
So similar to ours, it is a 242 product. They do give uh, 38 inches, 19 inches of width, seven inches of recline with an adjustable, adjustable leg and headrest. And then this is just a little brief review of our premium economy, which we have 24 seats with a 41 inch seat pitch, which is actually more than any other Australian airline on this route with a nine inch sit seat recline. And we do have a dedicated premium economy check-in as we do for business class. And our uh, premium plated meal service inspired by the business class with premium wine. One of the things I did forget to say that in both business class and premium, we do have an espresso machine on board. So it's not just available for business, but also for the premium economy. And in the business class, we one of the welcome drinks, it's not just champagne, we also have peach bellinis on board as well for business class. And this is a side-by-side -side comparison of our, what we, I guess, are calling enhanced economy. We call it economy X, Delta is calling it Delta Comfort Plus. So on us, it's 25% more leg room, seating in the first five rows plus the two exit rows. Delta is priority boarding. They have up to four inches of additional leg room, extra seat recline, extra for our fresh fruit, and additional premium snacks, and dedicated overhead uh, bin space and nine inch seat back screens and Wi Fi available for purchase, as is ours. And then uh, the economy, which is very similar to 333, two pieces of checked baggage. So um, for both Virgin and Delta, our business class has allowed two pieces of baggage for premium economy and economy is also two pieces, but it's 23 kilos, which is 50 pounds each. And then this is another slide I'd like to show, and I can send this in a PDF as well. Just because I know with all of the different airlines that you work of, work with, it can be very confusing, especially with code share partners, to know who do you need to book, what, in what class. So business classes, I think with all airlines, can be fairly standard. The top is J, C, D, and I, so um, that's pretty standard. But in premium economy, it can be very different in economy. So as you can see, our premium here is W, R, and O, so our top is W, R is middle, and O is our, our lowest, and that's obviously whenever we have any fair sales, they tend to mostly be in the O class, whereas de Delta is, is G, A, P, so gap. Then in economy X, so as I advise, currently we don't have it, oops, Currently don't have it as a bookable class, but we're hoping to rectify that next year, whereas Delta's is W class. And then when you go to our economy, as you can see, the economy has all of the booking classes. So if you see their X, it correlates to our T as in Tangle class. So I think that very much helps to show you if you're looking, especially if you're trying to book the, the code share flights in the US, or if you have to book the Delta, what you're looking for Delta and what you're looking for the A. So just uh, try and make it as easy as possible for you. And then on the left, it's just a little quick little advice to know if we allow advanced seat assignments, uh, if you can use upgrades, so especially with Delta. So we currently don't allow uh, upgrades uh, on a 795 VA ticket with Delta miles and vice versa with them on us. We're hoping at some point in the future that that will be allowed, but currently at this time, it shows you if it allows priority checking, free baggage allowance, uh, amenity kits. We do provide amenity kits in all cabins. So even economy class does get not only the little um, eye shades, the little, um, earphones, but also we give the really cute little pins just because there are some forms that you have to fill out through customs when you go into Australia. So instead of um, them uh, back in the day having to ask flight attendants, they actually made the amenity kits in all classes at least have a pin available. 
So, and it tells you priority boarding. It even tells you what the seat with, the meal, drinks, and snacks, um, and Wi-Fi. So this is another little quick access to give you some pertinent information. And then this is back to uh, Virgin Specific. So this is about our agent help desk. So the good news is that we started a 24-7 help desk um, last year. So it is available 24-7. So if you dial 1-855-226-5060 here in the U.S., that is the number you will get 24-7. The only time that we've seen a slightly limited time is that week between Christmas and New Year's. And then it does revert to Brisbane time. So that unfortunately will impact you maybe a little bit because then it will actually shut on from 2 p.m. Los Angeles time, so uh, Pacific Dance Standard Time. But what we try and do during that week is have at least one of us on staff. So if there's anything urgent, you can email us and uh, we can um, assist you. Now, actually, I do come from a previous support role, so I do have access to the GDS. And so I do have a fair bit of knowledge of fairs and rules and things like that. So I hopefully I will be the one to uh, be uh, as I was last year. And then um, our email address has not changed. Unfortunately, I've realized the email address here is not is, is not correct. It's basically, va dot agents help us. So it hasn't changed ever. So if you've ever emailed our agent help us, that's never changed. So it's va.agents, plural, helpdesk at virginaustralia.com. They do have a response time of 48 hours. So I do um, advise that if it's something urgent, to call the actual call number uh, urgently. Or if it's something fairly complicated, what I do, and I even do this myself with my internal support team, is send an email ahead of time and then call the number just so that you've sort of given the basic information and then called in and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for, what can you suggest? And they've gotten much better. And from what I've heard, there are very few uh, issues with them. But in case you ever do, definitely let me know because I do have an internal support supervisor that I can go to if it's something that they haven't been able to help you with and something I cannot help you with. And this is another thing that I like to talk about. So on our website, if you go to virginaustralia.com slash agents, this goes to what is called our agent hub site. So this is exclusively for all agencies, all agents. It's not password protected. But if you look through here, it has, and the areas that are most, I think, important for you here in the US are the, are the tabs of trade release, so that's just any trade releases that we have just put out in market. Commercial policy. So commercial policy is important is if there's anything that's happened in Australia or the surrounding countries that we fly to. Like it seems like every year there's either an ash cloud volcanic eruption either in Indonesia or sometimes Fiji. So this commercial policy tab would have the most current update whether we're flying, if we're flying, if we're not flying, what our policy is. If we're, if we're um, cause last year we had it and we were all offering an alternative destination and we we're also offering full refunds. And then the blanket waiver for refunds would be there. So this is a very helpful tab, those two, the trade release and the commercial policies. Policies and guide, which is, this is just a snapshot of this one. So this gives some of the basic uh, PDFs. So especially here, actually it's not on here, but like we have our blanket waiver for schedule changes. So it's on this policy. So whether it's a VA schedule change or another airline, so specifically here in the US, if it's Delta. So it, um, you would look through that policy and see what it is. So. And then an important thing to note that whether it whether you're reissuing or refunding, we require a waiver code. So that would be in this policy. So if you're just doing a reissue, even exchange with a new flight, you would be required to put that blanket waiver code in the endorsement box. 
And then if, you're, if your client has deemed the schedule change, whether it's a VA or another airline, unacceptable, there's a, there, you can use the waiver code for that. And it will, uh, I forgot where that needs to be placed when you're doing the refund. But that's just to let you know some of the details. And also, if you want to do the Economy X, there's also in these policies and guides, there is a, a guide, a clue card on how to do the EMD in your GDS. And then in the other tab here, the sales tools, it actually gives, it has some visual guides on our different products. Like there's a whole um, PDF on our business class. So if you have a client that wants a little more information on the business class or the premium economy or even the economy X, there's some um, PDF presentations in there, information that you can look at, information that you can even send out to your clients or you know the sub agents that you're working with. So there's that information there. And that is it. Um, as I explained with Greg, I sort of want, since we haven't done a webinar before, I just wanted to give you some of the basics, give you all of this information, hopefully giving you something that maybe you didn't know before. If there are any questions that you'll be having, or if later you find that you have some questions you didn't think of, you can always email me at some point, and I will look into that for you. But that is basically my presentation. Oh, great. Very, very good, Victoria. Appreciate that. Very informative. And we did have a few questions roll in here, which I'll just present to you if you can try to answer those. Uh, there were actually a couple of okay. questions about uh, about seat recline, but you had a great slide that showed that. So I think that those questions got answered with that slide that you had. And just uh, on okay. that note, on that note, everyone, I did record this webinar. And I will send you a copy okay. of it. So if you did not get that information, and there's a lot of information on those slides, you'll get a copy of this recording so you can go back through there and, and use that as a resource for information for you. Um, here's one that you may not know, but maybe you could help them find the answer to. Someone's asking, um, if you're connecting through Sydney to Bali, for example, what is the time allotted where a visa is not required? Do you know how to find that answer, Victoria? Well, actually, actually, when I went in April, that's where I went. And I, I have to say, we have a very good connection. So if you're, um, so I as staff went, so I had to clear and go through. But if your clients or if the sub agents are booking, um, there is a transit lounge. So if you are going directly through to Australia and you're not stopping and you're there, there is an international transit area because we uh, we went with a friend who was non-airline, so they purchased a ticket. So they went directly in Sydney or in Brisbane, which is where most of our connections go through. They um, they just went directly into the transit lounge. So you wouldn't need a visa as long because I think what it was we got in. I think when we because we went through Brisbane on the outbound into Sydney on the return. I think our flight got in at about six. The connecting flight was at about 10, and that was plenty of time. Um, and then just a, a little fun fact, if you look at our fare, since we now have three fares to Bali, it does allow a free stopover in Australia. So if you do have people that want to do a dual destination, just to let you know that is possible. And if they do need a visa for Australia, we in the U.S. There's something called the um, the ETA Electronic Travel Authority. So you would just go to the Australian um, website, so the Australian government web website. Um, I think it's like twenty twenty five dollars to get an ETA. But all uh, all U.S. passport holders can get one. Now the tricky part is they're from a, another country that may require an actual visa, but you can find out all of that information on the Australian government site if they're going to do a stopover, or if it's more than I think four hours. Okay, and, um, and someone's asking, do you fly into New Zealand? We do. So we have an alliance with Air New Zealand that ended last October. So once that ended, uh, we started flying all 
not only the flights, the routes we all, we already flew, but we sort of uh, pumped up um, the routes that we've flying and added more. So that means if you're booking VA or Delta, whether it's a VA coded or Delta coded, you can fly uh, or you can do a lot more flights into New Zealand now. The only drawback is we don't have direct flights from New Zealand back into the US, so that they they will need to go back into Australia to come back to the US. But the other great part is there are one-way fares as well. So if you have people that want to go from the US to Australia to New Zealand, and then maybe do a one way back on, on one of the other guys back into the US, that, uh, you know, one way fares are not as expensive as they used to be. So that's definitely something that is available now too. Okay. And how about connections to the Cook Islands? Yeah, I'm not as familiar with that. We do have flights, but I don't know the exact connections. Actually, that's the, the one area I have not researched as much because I know with Papua New Guinea, they're fairly, fairly good. Um, and even into Fiji, Indonesia, but Cook Islands, I am not as sure on that. So I, I will look into that and, and get back to you all on the, the connections into Cook Islands. Okay. And do you know who needs uh, the ETA? Is it they're asking, is it all U.S. visitors to Australia? Yeah, so basically it, everybody needs a visa into Australia unless they're an Australian or New Zealand passport holder. Okay, easy enough. And someone's asking, yeah. can, can, someone's asking, can you put your contact info back up there? Do you have that on a slide where they can see it? Sure. I do. Sorry. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I did not go to that slide yet. There yes, we go. So there, there it is. Right there. So there it is. You can write it down or remember you will get this webinar recorded and sent to your email probably with, by tomorrow for sure, if not this afternoon. Um, but uh, but there it is. And um, well, great. I think we've we've got everything resolved. So we're we're good here. Um, Victoria, really appreciate your time today and the information. There were a lot of good well, reviews came in. So um, um, we will get that again. We'll get that recording out to everybody by tomorrow sometime. And Thanks so much again. Have a great afternoon, everybody. All right. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye.